Crash series has been getting some rough treatment as of late. Crash had reached the height of his popularity with Crash 3 and CTR. However, his games began to decline in quality after that. Bash still held up, but Wrath of Cortex was, to put it lightly, below average, and Crash Nitrocart was just a mediocre attempt at recreating CTR. What the series needed was something new. Previous installments had been clinging to formulas that had already had the life squeezed out of them, games that didn't even need sequels. The series needed a new and refreshing experience. As a result of all this, Crash to Insanity was born. <laughs> Crash to Insanity was developed by- OH MY GOD! <laughs> oh wait, it's developed by Traveler's Tales Oxford Studios. Yeah, for some reason Traveler's Tales is in the developer's name, even though the Traveler's Tales that developed Wrath of Cortex has nothing to do with it. Uh, I'm just gonna call them Oxford Studios from now on. Crash to Insanity is a very interesting little gem. It's got its fair share of positives, but also negatives. This game has had tons of mixed opinions. Some, like Gadgetron Watcher, have said that the game is unfinished and isn't even worthy of being called a Crash game. Others, like this creepy asshole, <coughs> have gone on to say that it's the best Crash game ever, and that no installment has lived up to the caliber of this one. I think both opinions are a little extreme, as I tend to fall in the middle. Let me get the story out of the way first, since I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Coco was playing around on Insanity Island. Suddenly, Cortex shows up and stuns Coco with his ray gun. Cortex then dresses up as Coco and goes to Crash, who is relaxing on the island. Cortex tricks Crash into following him to a part of the island where he plans to ambush Crash, and, surprise surprise, ambushes Crash there. Cortex and Crash fight, when eventually Crash wins. Cortex then calls on Engine to help in piloting the Mecha Bandicoot to combat Crash. When Crash defeats the Mecha Bandicoot, the explosion causes Crash and Cortex to be knocked into a hole, leading underground. Crash and Cortex play Super Monkey Ball until they return to the island. They are then greeted by the Evil Twins, two mutated parrots that come from the 10th dimension. The Evil Twins threaten that they will destroy the entire island. Crash and Cortex must put aside their differences and stop the Evil Twins. Crash to Insanity is a more open-world Crash game. Crash has abandoned the warp rooms and has instead decided to go for a more Jack and Daxter style open feel. Instead of having to select your level among a menu, you instead just go along an open but also linear path. The levels of Crash to Insanity are not accessed via the classic warp rooms, but now good old fashioned exploration. The game starts on Insanity Island and you're given a nice wide open space to get used to the controls. Crash controls considerably well. You've got your spin, your slide, the ability to double jump, and a body slam. Crash feels much tighter here than in the other games. You don't move in the air with any real sort of acceleration, and instead you control in the air like you would on the ground. It's much more sharp here than in the other Crash games. In fact, this can actually present a problem. Jumps in this game feel a little... strange. Because they are so tight, it can at times be difficult to tell when you land a jump. It's a bit hard to explain, but a lot of times I found myself missing platforms that I feel like I should have landed on. It can take a bit of getting used to. However, the game gives you ample time and space to do so, so no major harm done. Although, something does annoy me. I have to ask, why is the camera inverted? Why is the camera inverted? inverted. Why is the camera inverted? Having 
having the camera inverted made this game just annoying. Now, it's true you can tap the R1 button and have the camera centered behind you, but you can only do this while standing completely still. <sighs> How obnoxious. This game opens with a lengthy tutorial segment, which can be skipped. It irritates me because there's no reason for this tutorial to be so long. Either teach me by just design of the game, or let me skip through it. However, I did enjoy seeing what this game had to offer. I have to say, this game looked beautiful. The attention to detail is astonishing on this game. This game never settles with getting by on graphics. It excels in this aspect more so than any other Crash game. It's not the best looking game on the PS2, but it's pretty damn nice. But even so, it looks 20 times better than the god-awful Wrath of Cortex does. Just the feeling of going through the bright forests, the dimly lit caves, the cold tundras. The game has a great sense of atmosphere. The environment doesn't just look great, but it feels great. This time, it feels like you're interacting with the environments way more than in Wrath. It incorporates parts of the level correctly, like using TNT boxes to knock down trees. You can tell Oxford Studios put a lot of detail into these environments, making sure that they felt the way they should. The story is also interesting, as this time you feel much more involved than before. You also meet some new characters as well, all of which fit into the Crash Bandicoot universe near perfectly. There are the evil twins, two genetically mutated parrots who want to take over the world. There's also Nina, Cortex's cyborg niece, who was sent to Madame Amberley's Academy of Evil because she was too nice. The backstories behind these characters are all unique, and I'm not going to spoil them because I encourage you to find them out for yourself. The voice actors this time around have done an excellent job. This was the first game to have Lex Lang providing the voice of Cortex instead of Clancy Brown. I do miss Clancy Brown. His voice just screams classic Crash Bandicoot. As much as I do love Clancy Brown's Cortex, I gotta say, I think I like Lex Lang's Cortex just a little bit more. Cortex's voice actor was probably changed due to Cortex's change in character, and I have to say, Lex Lang is great with this. Everything this guy says is just pure gold. There are times where I found myself laughing at things that I normally wouldn't really find that funny, just because his delivery is so great. He also has, hands down, my favorite line read from any Crash game. I've ruined the lives of so many, I can't be expected to remember them all. Ultimately, I'd say that Lex Lang is a good Cortex, although I will say that Clancy Brown's evil laugh is ten times better than Lex Lang's. <laughs> <laughs> this game also had some very clever writing. Some of the jokes in this game are just hilarious. The comedy is very witty, and it even breaks the fourth wall on a few occasions, going as far as to even reference how bad Wrath of Cortex was. The check bounced. Are you sure? Well, the past few years have kind of been slow. Wrath of Cortex didn't do as well as we'd hoped, and... Fish? See, Crash fans? Even Cortex thinks that Wrath sucks. Stop defending this disgraceful piece of shite already and go play a good game. Crash's levels are pretty fun. You go about the levels breaking boxes as you go, coming across new bosses and characters. The bosses of this game are pretty lackluster, though. The bosses lack a sense of progression. Look at Engine's boss. All you need to do to beat him is do the exact same thing three times in a row. The only boss that I felt was really well designed was Dingo Dial. How's he, ain't it? Rumor is you two chumps have got your mitts in some treasure. And I want a piece of that pie. I have no idea what you just said. Dingo Dial was the only boss that got harder with each hit. However, the bosses make up for their lack of difficulty with their outstanding presentation. Each boss fight is so over the top and utterly ridiculous for the most part, that it's just fun to fight them because of how hilarious it all is. You also get to control a number of vehicles and characters. You can control the Rollerball, in which Crash and Cortex have to roll around after they get in a fight, or the Humiliscate, where Crash uses Cortex as a snowboard. You also get to play as Nina and Cortex. Now, this game sounds pretty badass. However, I have a fistful of problems with it. I'm just gonna list them off in no particular order. One element of this game that annoys me is its soundtrack. Now, the soundtrack of this game is an interesting topic. The game's music is done by a group named Spiromouth, and what's actually interesting is that all the music is done with voices. There are no instruments used in this game. It's very impressive, and I have to admit that I was surprised when I heard this. The guys at Spiromouth are obviously very talented. However, as impressive as it is, it also gets... really annoying. And I mean really quickly, too. I did like some songs from this game, but with the exception of the Iceberg Lab theme, I found the soundtrack to be forgettable. Some songs are just insanely annoying, like the Academy of Evil theme, or the song that plays when you're in the 10th dimension. Uh, 
but what's even more annoying are the fact that some songs just start out awesome and then get annoying. Like listen to this song. Alright, I'm enjoying this, you know, this sounds pretty badass. Uh, what? It sounds like Spiromouth threw a tantrum while they were recording and they just rolled with it. The music isn't gonna bother you too much, but when you get stuck on parts of a level, the music will not help. Also, the soundtrack as a whole is pretty forgettable. But guess what? There are tons of people that say that it has the best music in a Crash game, and even go as far as to say that it's the best game soundtrack ever. And to these people I say, play a fucking Spyro game for once. But the soundtrack is only the beginning of my problems with this game. Remember those characters I mentioned before? Controlling Nina is quite fun, but you only get to do it once the entire game, aside from the final boss. And Cortex... <sighs> Cortex sucks in this game. I mean, fuck yeah, he's an awesome character, but playing as him is a nightmare! Being able to play as my favorite Crash character was something I've always wanted to do since Crash 1, and now that I finally got to... I wish I hadn't done so. Cortex's gameplay involves using your blaster to clear enemies, but it feels less like a Crash game and more like a fucking Kingdom Hearts game. Having trouble? Just mash the attack button, and all your problems will go away. His gameplay doesn't feel fun or challenging, it's just a pain in the ass. And guess what? You have to fight two bosses with him! It's incredibly boring. The cutscenes are also annoying in this game. Cutscenes cannot be skipped, but say that you die after seeing a certain cutscene. If your checkpoint puts you in a spot behind where you saw that cutscene, you'll have to watch it again. This can be incredibly annoying. Also, I've noticed that the frame rate tends to chug a little in this game, mainly when there are a lot of enemies on the screen or when a lot of nitros explode at once. The game starts to slow down a little, and it can be pretty distracting. And then there's the glitches with this game. Oh god, the glitches. Everyone knows about the glitches in this game. Everyone. Seriously, Crash Twin Sanity glitches are their only YouTube category now. There are just too many to count. I can't complain too much because most of the glitches don't get in the way. But at the same time, the glitches are incredibly easy to pull off and you can do insane things with them. You can skip entire levels, get certain characters to be where they're not supposed to be, fuck with the music, get out of bounds. If you wanted to document every single Crash Twin Sanity glitch in writing, you would need a book longer than the goddamn Bible. The glitches, however, aren't as much of an annoyance as you'd think. You can play through the entire game and encounter next to none, but it shows that this game clearly did not get the amount of testing that it should have, or just laziness on Oxford Studios part. Most of these are just my gripes, especially the music bit. They weren't a major detriment, and they didn't prevent me from enjoying the game as a whole. However, I did realize a major problem with this game. It's that the game, as a whole, has practically no replay value. This game is incredibly easy, possibly the easiest Crash game ever made, and it's also one of the shortest. To put it in perspective, Crash Twin Sanity took me 3 hours and 4 minutes to complete. Crash Team Racing took me 5 hours and 39 minutes to complete, and that's only the adventure mode. Now, it's true that this game does have gems, but they aren't obtained by breaking boxes, but instead found in hidden paths. The gems will unlock you neat little concept art, FMVs, and other crap that only the real geek gear are gonna care about. It sucks because I love Crash Twin Sanity, but it's way too short. Crash Twin Sanity is a new and refreshing experience, one that the Crash Bandicoot series definitely needed. Crash Twin Sanity tried to be new, and it tried to be original, and in a lot of cases, you can say it was successful. A lot of people consider Crash Twin Sanity their favorite Crash game. Of course, the game does not come without its flaws, whether it be irritating soundtrack, repetitive bosses, awkward controls, or... Most irritatingly, its lack of replay value, it is not the best that the series has had to offer. But if you're going to compare it to Wrath of Cortex or Crash Nitro Kart, it's definitely worth your time. Crash Twin Sanity is an average game. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a second. Don't let the fact that just because I consider this game average mean that it's not worth your time. Most average games, provided they are priced reasonably, are worth a buy. You can get this game used on Amazon for very cheap, and for only $5, Crash Twin Sanity is definitely worth your time. Anyways, tune in next time to see what happens when game developer Radical Entertainment changes the way we look at Crash Bandicoot.
Oh, wait, that's not next. Tune in next time to see what happens when a mediocre platform game is crossed with a mediocre kart racing game when I review Crash Tag Team Racing. Everybody go ahead and have a grand slam in time. Greatest evil scientist in the world! Stuck in a pipe. How could things get any worse?